I was raised in a home with dirt floors, no running water or electricity for a time. The first time I learned how to use a dishwasher or a microwave was when I went to college. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is like, I am so excited to have this interview today. I'm here with Amber, Amber Dawn Pierce. Hi, Amber, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I feel so cool to be here. You may have seen her around on social media. She uh, is very open about her faith and her story and um, just is so good at spreading positivity about the the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you haven't seen her videos before, she has a really cool story about her upbringing and how she she found her faith. But Amber, uh, welcome. And is there anything that else that you would like to say just to help us get to know you a bit? Oh, well, I'm, I'm a bit of a hippie girl. I live out in the mountains with my family. I have five kids and I, I love sharing about the gospel. So I've eaten rattlesnake. Is that a cool story? Oh my gosh. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Again, but yeah, like, you know, when you live out in the middle of nowhere and don't have a TV, sometimes you hunt rattlesnake for fun. So there you go. <laughs> the things that you, I honestly, that's like, how you just explore the world. Um, I think that's really cool. I don't know if I, you know what? I, I could probably, I would do it just to say I did it, but I don't know if I would enjoy it, but kudos to you. That's, that's like, you're like living a rugged lifestyle. And no, I love that. That's awesome. So many of your videos have taken off just kind of in on Instagram and in general. And um, one of those is kind of talks about like your parents and how they became converted to the church. So for our viewers who are not familiar with this, uh, haven't seen this video, could you give us a little um, kind of tell that story a bit? Because it's honestly so cool and so interesting. Yeah, I'd love to. So I was raised by hippies who converted to the church. My parents lived on in a full-on hippie commune in a freeform house and two men in suits, which happened to be their home teachers, because my dad was actually baptized as a teenager, but never was really active in the church. Okay. So um, two men in suits were brave enough to show up at the commune Everyone took off because they thought it was the FBI. Oh my gosh. My like, they're going to get our drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my dad stayed because he knew. And um, my parents, eventually my dad came back into full fellowship in the church and my mom was baptized. But I mean, you can take the hippie out of the commune, but you really can't take the hippie out of the hippie. So I was raised in a home with dirt floors no running water or electricity for a time. The first time I learned how to use a dishwasher or a microwave was when I went to college. <laughs> it was wow. awesome. That convenience of all the things I've been missing. But also after my parents had five children of their own, they started adopting and ended up adopting a, a boy with special needs five sisters from Calcutta, India, and then adopted their cousin, who was a boy. And then my mom um, and dad adopted one of my mom's students from school. So we ended up with uh, 13 kids in the family Teen. living out in the middle of nowhere. And it was a unique upbringing, to say the least. <laughs> that is very unique. And you know, like when I, when I think hippie, sometimes I I, I don't quite go as far as like hippie, hippie, like dirt floors, like no electricity, like very one with the earth. Like you guys are like real, true hippies and had all those kids um, out there and still living in the commune. Was this still kind of in that area where they chose to live? Uh, no, actually, after my parents converted, they, they stayed um, in the commune just for a little bit. But then we moved about an hour away up into the mountains and, but it was definitely off grid. You, you couldn't even get electricity if you wanted to, wow. or you had to haul it in. Wow. 
still very hippie style. And that is, I, I bet you acquired so many skills that many of us probably have not acquired. Um, I could totally win on Survivor. I could, I tell you. <laughs> right? You probably watch it. You're like, oh yeah, I, I could do that. That's so cool. And how old were you when uh, the missionaries came? Were you pretty little? I was, I, I was probably pushing the missionaries to come from above. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. Okay. Um, my, uh, my parents were, had one child and were pregnant with their second and I am number four. So. Awesome. So what are some things that influence, like, cause you kind of talk about this hippie lifestyle. What are some examples of how that affected your life as a Latter-day Saint? Well, it was funny. I didn't realize that we were that weird family. You know, <laughs> you never do until you leave the house, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's great. It goes to show how good people were at accepting and loving my very loud, large, different family. Something I love about the gospel. Um, but one way I feel like it affected my testimony and the way I saw the world and the way I saw God was that, you know, people didn't have to try and convince me that the gospel changes lives and it affects your life for good. I saw it first and uh, not only did I know how my parents' lives had transformed because they were very open about what their life was like when they um, were addicted to drugs and my dad was an alcoholic. Um, and so I knew that part of their lives and I knew how they had changed. Not only that, but they also kept a, you know, they kept their hippie friends. And so like they had a friend who every time he was on parole, he would come and live with us. And so I didn't live a very sheltered life. I saw so many people from so many different walks of life and I saw what it was like to not know Christ and to not live the principles of the gospel. And so you didn't have to convince me. I, I knew how important the gospel of Jesus Christ was. That's incredible. And, and I think that sometimes members of the church get a bad rep because, you know, people claim that, especially if you're like, a Utah Mormon, you know, like that there's, that we're not diverse or that we, we all live like a very similar lifestyle or very sheltered. And, and like, I think that that can be the case a lot of the time. Um, but you know, I love your example of, of how like being just seeing this different way of living and, and how people's lives were within and without of the gospel, how that shaped your faith. Um, I think that's really great and really needed. And we need those kinds of perspectives in our faith as well. Growing up, did you, did you really care about, like, did you notice any big differences between your family and maybe others in your ward? Or did you not really care and you were kind of just living your life? Or, or did you, was there anything like that you noticed like, okay, like that makes us kind of different. Or maybe that was just something you noticed once you moved out of the house. I don't know. No, I did notice that we weren't as prim and proper, you know. My, my dad's motto is that dirt was good for you and soap is optional. <laughs> so, you know, I, I noticed that our family was louder and dirtier and just different in that respect. But I loved that also my parents' philosophy was like, we are going to teach you all this beautiful truth. And you, we leave it up to you to choose. My ve- mom, mom and dad were very open to, well, they loved agency, right? Mm-hmm. I always felt like I was free to learn and explore and choose things for myself. And it made it so all the easier to choose the gospel. And if we ever, and we were so free to make mistakes. Uh, <laughs> I think that helped because my mom, like, and dad saw the horrible mistakes that they made and that look what Jesus Christ does. You're going to be okay. So I love that they had that perspective. There was so much freedom to make a mistake and that's okay. And you're going to be all right. And so that atmosphere was such a 
beautiful atmosphere to be able to grow in the gospel and um, trust in the power of repentance and forgiveness. I think that that is such a healthy perspective and a way to grow up. And it's, and it seems like it has just really affected who you are as a person and made you this wonderful person you are today. And, and you have been so good about sharing that gospel, uh, that you grew up with it. You saw change lives. And I I'd love to know, like what kind of inspired you initially to start sharing more online, like making videos, posting on TikTok, posting on Instagram. I know it's not easy to do when you're in this faith, but what inspired you? You know, it, it is definitely not easy. And honestly, social media was something I avoided like the plague, even just for myself. I was like, mm, no, but I almost took pride in staying away from social media. But I just kept on having these nudges, almost like this, like, Amber, I didn't give you these experiences just for yourself. And I started also seeing this trend towards people just losing their faith and even having a, a bit of a faith struggle myself and getting through it. I was like, people need to know that they can be unshaken in their faith and that it, it is not only is it needed, but it's necessary in these last days. And if there is something that I can say, a piece of my testimony, a part of my story that could strengthen one person, I'm willing to do it. It was, believe me, recording that first video was really hard. But once I did that, it's amazing what happens when you are willing to testify of Christ. The second you do it, more inspiration comes. He's with you in this work. And so I haven't been able to keep myself quiet. <laughs> video. That's so good though. And, and it is like, and I understand from experience, like I remember making my first like TikTok just about like church and, and it was so hard and scary. And I was like, when I posted it, I was like, I don't know how people are going to react to this. Like, you know, you just don't know. But I don't know. There's there's this like it, you're you're totally right how you feel God supporting you. And it almost feels like that stuff just doesn't affect you. So I mean, it, it can still affect you, but you're just like, you know what? I know this is true and I know how this has helped my life. So that's what's most important. And have you ever I'm sure you've had people reach out to you, probably message you and say that like your words have helped them honestly like even if a even if a video doesn't like go like get millions and millions of views there's always somebody who needs that and when they let you know it's amazing it makes it all worth it in fact before i posted my first video i was talking to my husband you know trying to make the decision and i said to him like if, if one person responds and says, my testimony was strengthened today or whatever, it, it'll be worth it. And man, more than one person responds now. And it's, it just blows my mind. It's just a humbling opportunity to prophesy of Christ. When I first um, started thinking about sharing, I was like, well, I'll just share things that all Christian uh, faiths believe, right? And just there's so much about Christ that we all believe and have in common. And, but it became very clear, very quickly where the spirit was like, Amber, I have plenty of people talking about mainstream Christian stuff. Like, but you have more What you have so much of the world doesn't know. That's what you need to share. And that's what was really scary was the very, um, you know, the doctrine that often gets criticized about our faith. But not only does it get criticized, though, it, when people open their hearts to it, it, it changes lives. And so that criticism is worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and I love what you said about um, sharing about general Christianity versus, cause I have had very similar thoughts about like, sometimes it, we're really tempted to want to blend in 
um, with the rest of the Christian world, even though the rest of the Christian world will still come at us and be like, you're not Christian, even when we do. Right. (laughs) But there's just something about offering what you have that is so unique. And I love, I love that you brought that up. Um, and, and also not only what you have is, is unique to, um, the world, but what you bring to the table as a Latter-day Saint to other Latter-day Saints is also unique because of how you were raised. And I hope that people can find that connection with you because if there's someone who maybe feels like they come from a household where they don't fit the mold, like the, the mold that we talk about, right. Um, they can feel like, you know what, there, what mold there doesn't need to be a mold. No, I completely agree with you. I, I think that's what I love about, you know, the culture of the church 30 years ago when I was a teenager. Um, it's changed so much. Like that mold is being broken. Like the gospel is for everyone, whatever your background, however many tattoos you have and whatever your past is or, you know, whatever it the gospel is for everyone. Yeah, it is. And do you have any other words of advice for people who maybe feel like, I don't know, that they don't fit in or that they're alone or just maybe different? I don't know. You know, I think that the Lord loves diversity because different experiences, different viewpoints speak to different people. And God needs this variety of experience and voices because he knows that your voice, your light is going to touch somebody that no one's else's voice or light could touch. Does does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like we need everyone. It just, it it shows also the power and reach of the atonement of Jesus Christ. It, It doesn't discriminate. And so if you're different, awesome. <laughs> you are proof that Heavenly Father loves all of his children and is so aware of you. Yeah. Um, as a mother, how have you taken how your parents raised you and applied that to your own children? Have you kept a lot of the things that they did with you? uh from your upbringing or kind of i mean maybe like a combination but how has that looked like for you as a mother um well i hope i hope that i have inherited a lot of my parents parenting skills because they, they were pretty amazing i the one thing that my parents always instilled in me is that people are more important than material things and of all the things that uh i've learned that is one thing that I've been tried to instill in my children. And, and that's why my parents were able to give so much. It's not like they were rich, right? They weren't. Uh, and yet they still adopted eight children beyond their five. Amazing, and seriously. It, it was an incredible lesson on how little is needed to give love like that's what matters to be able to just open your heart and love the people around you these things they are of no worth you don't take them with you and so i hope i i I know that has affected how i've uh interacted with my children and i try not to spoil them (laughs) and help them see the importance of hard work but care about the things that are most important. And that is people. I love that. And I think that's so true. It makes me think of Jesus Christ and how, when he was with his disciples or when he was meeting them, he told them to drop everything and to follow him. Like there are so many examples that we can look to in the scriptures and in church history of people who really gave up those things that we would deem as in like our important things um, for God and for the gospel and for their families and for people. So I think that that's such a healthy way to think and something that I hope that I can be better. Um, I mean, I only have a two-year-old, so we're not, we're, we're working on sharing and stuff, but 
you know, when I have my kids in the future that, that I can teach those same things. Um, I've also tried to, like my parents did, expose them to so many different types of people from different backgrounds, cultures, races, whatever, to, so that they can see, you know, just open their world just a little bit. Um, I think it helps you be less judgmental, more accepting. And then also when you see that person that looks a little out of place, rough around the edges, maybe a little scary to approach, you won't be afraid to approach them, to help them, to invite them into your home. Mm. So that's another thing that my parents gave me that I hope I've given to my kids. I think sometimes we forget that our kids are always watching us and how we behave around other people, like, and how we choose to see others. Like if you're at the store and you see someone, I don't know, who like looks really, really different. Um, just the way that you behave and like conduct yourself around others, like your kids watch those things. Right. So I, I think that's really great advice. And, um, Amber, thank you so much for being willing to come on the show. I know that our viewers and I myself have been really excited to hear from you. Um, if if you all have not are not following her are out there in our audience, if you're not following Amber, um, her name is Amber Dawn Pierce. She is active on TikTok, on Instagram. Um, are you active on like, are there any other channels that people might want to follow you on? Like, I don't know if you do. Do you do YouTube a little bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You do YouTube, YouTube shorts. Actually, now starting a podcast, Hope Smiling Brightly with Amber Dawn here. So, oh, awesome! <laughs> Great. Well, we'll definitely keep a lookout for that. Uh, well, thank you all so much for watching today. Um, give a comment if you have any questions for Amber. Um, and uh, we love you all. We will see you next time. Thank you again, Amber, and it's been a pleasure. <laughs>